Today we're going to be talking about some of the bank trading setups, my best playbook setups, and we're going to review our simple process looking at gold, the euro, and the pound. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. G'day traders, Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today we're going to be reviewing some of my best playbook trade setups. This week has been an absolute cracker of a week. On all the pairs there has been textbook perfect trading examples. Today we're going to be talking about bank trading setups because that's who you're trading against. You're trading against the banks, the bigger players, the, the smart money, whatever we want to call them. But the other side of that chart, the people that are moving that chart that you're trading is your opponent and so today when we look we talk about building your playbook your best trade setups we're actually talking about building their playbook the bank trading uh, setups and today we're going to go through that on all three pairs we're going to review our simple process and I'm going to emphasize some critical key aspects for traders I'm receiving a ton of emails a lot of questions and today we're just going to hammer home on the basics and when I show you what these examples on the charts, I hope that resonates and hits home because a lot of people are making this very complicated. We're going to talk about a lot of little things today. Before we do that, I'd like you to take a second and just smash the like button for me. Hit the notifications, turn that on so that when we produce our latest video, you're, you're notified about that. A tremendous amount of feedback on the other side from a lot of traders that are starting to execute at the high and low of the day. It's understanding some very, very key aspects of how the smart money works. In order for a trader to make money, somebody has to lose. The institutions, the banks, the hedge funds, the big players, the large retail traders that are moving big size contracts, in order for them to be able to execute those orders, the banks are moving billions through these markets. In order for them to do that, they need somebody else to take the other side of that trade. Not just one person, but a collective bunch of traders. If you haven't done so, get Peter Brandt's book, Diary of Professional Commodity Trader, Schaubacher's book, Technical Analysis of Stock Markets, Peter Brandt's other book, Trading Commodity Futures with Classical Chart Patterns, get Edwards and McGee, Get reminiscences of a stock operator. Get confusions of confusions. Della Vega. Go back and read the classics and understand that we need a large collection of volume to get trapped on the wrong side or to build up that fuel that will energize our trade. Now we're going to go through some very specific examples today with these charts, uh, Euro, Pound and Gold. These are trades on gold that I did take and I'm going to show you the same trading setups that show up over and over and over again just by sticking to some basic principles and understanding what's happening. Gold I use the 15 minute and the 1 minute charts. On the other major pairs I use the 15 minute charts and I would encourage traders to master the basic setups on a 15 minute chart before you go down to smaller time frames. If you're already consistently profitable and you're doing that, then by all means continue what you're doing. For these examples though, I'm going to show you the same patterns show up over and over and over again just by waiting for the timing window at the high or low of the day and understanding that if we are not at the high or the low, that in the large majority of the cases, it's either a low probability day, like an inside day, a narrow range day, which obviously there may be trading opportunities there, but more importantly, that may be consolidating volume for a bigger move in the next day or two. But in our timing window, 8 to 11 p.m., 2 to 5 a.m., 8 to 11 a.m., for Asia, London, and New York, that's New York Eastern Standard Time, okay? I don't care if it's daylight savings, in London or in New York, whatever, I work on New York time year round. It doesn't matter if I'm out by an hour because I only work at the high and low of the day. So if I'm an hour early, an hour late, what matters is have they gone to the high or the low? Because otherwise it doesn't matter what time it is. I'm not working outside of these times. But as you'll see, like clockwork, 
when, they, when these timings kick in in a large majority of most trading days, most sessions, especially for gold, obviously London and New York, we can see the major pairs move. And on the odd day, Asia can offer some good opportunities depending on how our week sets up. Round numbers, double zeros and fifties. And yes, I take trades off the quarter levels. It depends on how that volume is clustered. So somebody asked, oh, can, oh you're trading off of 75 and, and 25 now. I've always traded off any number. It all depends on how the price behaves and what the setup is and where the volume is clustered. Remember, if we're looking, the market could be trending down, but they're trending down and hitting stops into the open of a session. They've got all these lower highs and a consolidated amount of volume for a big move back up to a, a trader who may be in profit. So understanding the difference between a trend, a trending setup versus a creeping trend for a squeeze or a blow off move. So round numbers, that in, enables us to see number one where our 50 pip boxes are, maybe 100 pip box if it's the US session for gold but also where volume can be clustered and also where our profitable trades are at. Then I'm looking for engulfments and pin hammers, especially on the 15 minute charts. But on the one minute on gold, and you'll see this on the other, other major pairs, but again, as I mentioned, master the 15 minute chart first, master the setups, then worry about going to smaller time frames. But the one minute will often have an M or a W pattern or a three push for an extended W or an extended M pattern for the reversal stop hunt move. Or if it's a trend trade, we'll get the, the 25 pip stop hunt against the trend for the continuation, especially at the equity opening hour. It's a one bar stop. So if I'm trading on the one minute chart, it's a one bar stop. That one bar will never be more than 15 pips max. Even if I extend it out a bit, 15 max on a one minute chart, if I'm trading on the 15, Minute charts on gold, 20 usually is my maximum stop. The odd time, 25, but that again depends on the setup and the volatility that's happening on the day. But on most major pairs, 20 pips would be well more than enough. If the volatility is blown out for whatever reason, if there's been major news, if you're trading after payrolls or Fed or whatever, again, I do not trade in front of the news, but after the news, redrawing my highs and lows, Again, once they lock in, you may have a very large candle, but if the market is moving, you'll never see it come back that far once you've got the correct entry. And again, you're targeting 25, 50, 100 plus in terms of the profit target, and that is not just a random guess. It is based on what the setup is on the day. If we're at the low of the day, or it could be just the low of a session back to the high of a session. If it's a session high, low, it may only be 25 pips. If I'm at the low of the day going to the high of the day, that may be a 150 pip move on gold or more. And again, that comes back to our understanding where our levels of rise and fall. Are they moving in 25 pip increments? How long, if you're on a major pair and it takes one hour to go 25 pips back to the high or back to the low of the day, that is probably the extent of that move. If it goes 25 pips in one bar, one 15 minute bar, chances are you are now in a, a 50 to 75 pip move depending again on the setup and the range of that structure as a measured move. So again, we talk about consolidations. Big moves come out of the consolidations. We may want, in my case, I look for the stop hunt at the timing window, out of the consolidation, trapping the first mouse or trapping people in the wrong direction hitting stops usually either at the higher low of the day or into a profitable trade for a move back in the other direction. And that could be a trend day or a reversal day. So depending on the setup, and again, we'll look at some very specific examples on all three of those. If you wanna look at, I get questions all the time, what about the New Zealand yen or what about the Swiss Aussie? If you wanna check those out, go and check them out. I don't trade those, so I can't, I use the same principles on any instrument that I trade. So if you're trading those instruments, which again, I don't understand why there are plenty of opportunities on all just the major pairs themselves. If you can't get gold in, in wherever you're trading, I understand that. But in a lot of cases, the exotics are just cross rates of those. They may offer a good setup, but to follow them day in and day out, I think that's limiting your perspective on some very simple opportunities. The key thing to understand 
for me is I don't care if I get 25, I don't care if I get 50 or 75. What I want to know is, is that my bank trading setup, my best playbook setup where I know they have locked in a level for either a trend trade or a reversal trade. I'm looking for my high probability setups where I've got a one bar stop and they are over fast because they're going to stop out traders who are caught in the wrong direction. That's the most important thing to understand. If I take 25 pips out once a week and I can do that week in and week out and scale that up in size, why do I want to worry about whether I got 75 or 50? I don't get into a trade and go, I want 100 pips on this trade and, and just put a 100 pip target in. There's a very specific technical way to ascertain and timing wise to understand when that trade may be going to reverse and come back. They could do a breakout pullback against your, your position and then continue, but you still want to lock in money. So it's important to recognize how price behaves when it gets to those levels. So coming back to some basic understandings, high and low. Okay, if I'm inside, this could be the beginning of the day. It may be going into the session. It doesn't matter. What I want to see is I want to know, okay, if we have a low where there's stops and a high where there's stops, if the market's been working down to the low of a session or to the high of a session. So if London goes up and makes higher lows, those higher lows now are significant because they are new lows of the day as the market moves up. They may be fuel for a stop hunt down. Again, if the market goes back up to a high and we've got higher lows, okay, and we get our engulfment and pin hammer up here, okay, for the move back down after our bullish move up and a reversal, whatever that may be. Again, we'll look at some specific examples. It's important to understand that you need to know exactly what you're looking for. It's not guesswork. We're not looking for 50-50. You need to know exactly the setups that you're looking for. And we're going to go through and look at some setups that showed up four times in a row within two days. The same setup. So it's not about psychology, it's about certainty. So you can have fear of getting stopped out, fear of loss, you know, fear of getting in, fear of missing out, all those different things that traders have. But at the end of the day, that to me is from uncertainty. So you either are certain exactly what you're doing and you know exactly what you're looking for, or you think you're looking for something and you got indicators all over and it looks like a buy and it's a sell, so you sell it. Next thing you know, it goes against you and you're caught in a whipsaw sideways. You get in again, it stops you out, you get in, it, and then it goes in your favor. And you go to break even and it comes back and stops you out to break even and then it takes off without you. And you're sitting there going, this is ridiculous. I got a loss, I got a win, I got a break even, I got stopped out and you don't know what's going on. So this is what I'm trying to explain is that there are certain setups and the only way for the bank to make money is to trap volume in the wrong directions and then move the market quickly and rapidly the other way. Now they may be trending, which means that they're they're potentially going to trend and they're not going to let traders back into the market or they're not going to let traders get out of the market that are caught. So they may be already caught in a, in a trend. There's a large amount of volume still holding on to losing trades or they're averaging into losers, whatever that may be. Or they may be bringing it up to sell it higher. So they bring it up, people start chasing it up, but all they want to do is bring it up high to sell it higher for a big move down. They're getting a better price and the same thing goes for, for buying it. They may drive the market down for two days and go into consolidation and then rapidly come back up in two hours what took two days to go down. So again, start thinking about who's trapped in the markets, discipline versus undisciplined, and impatience. Develop the discipline to know exactly what we're looking for and then knowing that if you stick to these parameters, for me, I stick to this timing window and like clockwork, as you will see, they show up every session, day in and day out. So other time frame traders, okay, are they getting trapped into a move off the high or off the low at the beginning of the timing window? Are they triggering new traders into the highs and lows as breakout traders? That's when we're looking for a reversal trade. Why? Because nobody gets a free lunch. So if you're trading a breakout system, your four hour bar closes, you buy the break of the next bar or you sell the break of the next bar, 
it goes in your favor for 10, 15 minutes, you check it an hour later, and all of a sudden you're down 40 pips and you can't figure out what happened. So understanding where traders can be getting trapped up high and down low when those new time frames are triggered in those 12 candle windows. Okay, and the same goes for end of day. We saw a great example of this on gold the other day. They, they broke out of the high, explosive move, moved it up 50 pips. They marked it, then sold off for a 75 pip stop hunt down into the Asian session uh, trade. But they kept end of day traders 50 pips underwater for four more hours. So again, that was a momentum explosive move. It showed us the directional bias, the market consolidated underneath of that keeping traders underwater if it didn't already stop them out, okay, before it resumed with a massive squeeze and a 150 pip move in the US session. So we will look at some very specific examples. But understanding, like four hour, one hour, I don't care what the trend is, I wanna know when I go into the timing window, is somebody getting trapped? How do I tell that? Well, we're gonna look at some two very specific examples on gold using the beginning of the sessions to recognize that. And again, euro and pound giving off some textbook perfect, simple trade setups, engulfments and pin hammers, high and low of the day, off of numbers after the stop hunt in the session 12 candle window. So again, thank you for a ton of great feedback. Just in, before we take off and look at that, just remember, keep asking yourself, which trader is currently in profit? And understand that in the majority of cases, there will be a stop hunt back into that trade. And if you've been trading long enough, you know you've been in plenty of trades, you're up money, you're up money, you hold on, you got a 50 pip or 100 pip target, whatever that may be, you come back a couple hours later, maybe three hours later, and it's come back and you can't figure it out because it was a trend. It's a trend day, this should be going. Why is it coming back? It defies all logic, and there's a reason for that because logic has nothing to do with what the market is about. The bank is there, the other side of the coin, the smart money institutions, Whatever you want to call them, algorithms, electronic market maker, doesn't matter, it's us against them. They will do everything to trap the retail market into believing all of those technical indicators and everything else to chase moves, three pushes, three days, three months in some cases. So understand what your best trade setups are. That's your trading their playbook. Pick two or three. We're going to go through some crystal clear examples of the same setup three days in a row. So again, thank you for a ton of great feedback. Step aside, step back, clarify exactly what you're looking for. Don't worry about all this, you know, create certainty in your process, in your ability to recognize it in live time and execute in live time. Take one trade at a time, master all the variables, perfect your skills in live time, keep working on getting better every single setup, relax yourself, step back, trade small, trade as small as you can. I don't, I don't trade on, I don't think that demo gives the same attachment to a trade outcome, even if it's the smallest lot size possible, trade it and master the execution of that trade in live time. Screenshot and have an actionable review process, meaning that have a solution-based review process, not just making notes and saying, this is my trade setup, this is where I would have got in or I should have got in, this is where I should have got out, this is what I should have done. What will enable you to have an actionable solution-based process each time you review a trade setup that you potentially didn't get as much out of a winner or you were in the wrong direction and got stopped out, you missed the real trade because you got trapped on the wrong side, whatever that is. What is going to empower you in a solution-based process after you review your best trade setup so that you can keep getting better every single day? Let's take a look at those and may the Hi traders, go. it's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7 Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.